hello and welcome back to another episode of whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, David. Same person as last time. I got a new haircut, but that doesn't change me as a person. So, last episode we went and designed a whole bunch of sounds for this beautiful water wheel. Um, and we're going to plug it in today. So, one of the first implementations of this would be to add... Uh, add each layer into our Metasounds patch, build that on our rotation blueprint, which if you haven't seen the last episode, I recommend checking out. I will put it on the screen somewhere. So what we'll be doing today is we'll be creating the uh, blending of the loops based on the degree of rotation of the wheel, uh, just for something kind of cool. And we'll also be looking to add uh, attenuation. So having some of these loops uh, be the four loops that we designed last episode uh, work based on the distance that you are from them and, and looking at implementing one of the interfaces that is the attenuation interface. So let's jump in and do a really simple version of this, which looks something like this, uh, which will be each of the loops just playing um, end to end. There's a trigger accumulator, which is something we can use so that we know when all of them are finished, although we'll be looping, so it doesn't really matter that much. And a mono mixer that's just going to take, or a four channel mono mixer that's going to take each of the sounds um, and hit play. Now, this version, probably fine for some games, uh, and uh, it sounds something like this. So this version might be totally fine for the game that you're working on. Uh, let's do something a little cooler though. In Metasounds, or let's make a Metasounds patch, and we're going to need to connect up our rotation that we set up in our Metasounds. So let's make a new input for our uh, Metasounds. It's going to be a float input because rotation's in degrees, and we're going to call it rotation. Okay, now we will be able to use a knob for this just so we can do a little bit of prototyping and you can change this from none, which is just an input to knob to slider, just to have a bit of a play. But just for a little sanity check, something I like to do first is just make sure that things are actually connecting um, and things are actually working as you'd expect. And I wanted to show you that you could print uh, inside the Metasounds window, which is really, really handy. So you don't need to necessarily connect it up to the game, but you can prototype all your inputs. So changing the range, range from zero to 360, and then we're going to connect up a on value change, which is just going to fire every time the value changes. It's probably overkill right now, but we're going to use it quite a bit. From there, I'm going to print a float out, which is going to allow me to uh, just see what the number is basically. And you know, when we hit play and we wiggle the knob around, you can see the little red uh, circle or red line. It sort of highlights through the DSP graph, uh, which of the flows is, is occurring right now, just for a bit of a sanity check. Now you can see if I open the output log, I've got some numbers for degrees. So hooray, it works, right? Now, that's not that useful. We don't need to print the value out so I can get rid of the print uh, and we can move on to our actual implementation. Now this value, we know that it's in 360, but we really care about whether or not it is rotated. And what I want to do is set up a rotation event to be on the 180 degree, so halfway through the turn, so that basically one of the events will fire at the start and we'll hear this kind of groaning chugging thing for the first 180 degrees, and then we will not hear it uh, after that. So I'm going to use the map uh, map audio to float or map range to float and set that up to be 180 degrees. And if it is less than 0.2, we're going to trigger uh, this comparison. Um, now, again, there's many ways that you could do this, but I think this is a good way to look at the logic. So if it's less than 0.2, which remember is about 20% of the total range of 360, we're going to trigger once, which is a really handy node that will fire only until we've hit reset. And from there, we're going to trigger out some prints. Now, some print statements here will help us uh, just determine again if that logic is working. And you don't need to use the print statements because we have that highlighted DSP flow, but it's something that you might want to do uh, early on while you're still getting your head around it. Now, I want to set up another comparison uh, for being the opposite side. So one for being when it's at one, but being 100% complete, which in our instance here, again, it is 180 degrees, not 360 degrees, but it's something that will uh, trigger to say, hey, the rotation is complete. Now, this will mean that our water wheel will sound different for the first half of its turn. And then for the second half of its turn, one of the elements won't play. 
which is going to be kind of cool. Now, from here, i am got my connection. I'm going to trigger each one once. And if I trigger this now, uh, I actually won't hear it again because it just triggers once. So I'll need to go through and set up my reset uh, nodes on each of the triggers. I'm going to go through, set up our triggers so that when we do hit uh, one of these trigger comparisons, we're going to reset the other one. Um, and they kind of flip flop against each other uh, to work through that. Set up my other trigger as well. And you can see when I pull my uh, rotation past zero, it'll fire or between you know zero and 0.2, it'll fire, which again, converted from degrees. And you can see the little red follow following through. When I go past 180, one part will fire. When I go back to zero, the other part will fire. And if things continue rotating, we have what we need to play. Now, the connection point here is using an ADSR envelope, and we're going to use a special envelope that will break this up. Now, to hear this a little cleanly, what I'd like to do is implement uh, the wave player for one of the functions, and you can kind of pick any, any function here. You could wrap this whole thing in its own Metasound source and use that later on. I'm gonna use a shorter version here. So this wave player is going to be uh, part of the metal groaning and chunking of the, the wood as it goes past and I'm just gonna fire that up. Now you can see I can tweak the rotation as much as I like. It is not connected to any audio file um, at, at the moment. It will be at one point, but we're building that. That's, that's what we're doing now. So to do that, we've got to use an ADSR envelope like I mentioned before. And the ADSR envelope is going to trigger an attack and trigger a release time. And we're going to use those attack and release times to fade out each of the layers. So one part, the zero to 0.2 part will trigger the attack. So fade it back in and the 180 degrees will fade it back out. Now I'm gonna multiply the audio by this float envelope because the envelope will again be a normalized value uh, for the gain as well. And if I've connected things right, and I'm pretty sure I have, if I hit play now, I have our sound source. Now I'm gonna change the attack time to about five seconds, just so it isn't so, so bright and, and hard on that side. And I'm gonna do the same for the release time. Now this means when I change my value all the way up, I'm gonna hear the sound. And when I hit 180 degrees, it's gonna start fading out. When I go back to zero, it's gonna fade back in. So we have an element here now that allows us to have a bit of a play with this one particular element. Now, the rotation, you might be saying, well, it's a water wheel though. Shouldn't the rotation sound the same the whole way around? But that is particularly one design direction that you might choose to take, but it isn't the design direction that you have to take. You could have something that changes a little bit as you go. And this patch at the moment will be part of us resolving that issue. Now, to give us context, because we don't actually want the water wheel to only be groans, we're going to need to hook in our other audio files. And I'm going to use a pretty basic source here where I am actually going to leave the other uh, sources as you'd expect and connect them up to a mono mixer. So each of these sources is going to be uh, just plugged straight into the mono mixer. So I've got mechanical sounds, there's some of the chugging of the uh, metal parts. I've got some wood movement sounds. Uh, and, and these layers will kind of work together just to give us a, a bit of a flavor, uh, just so it's a little bit different. I've got to set up looping on all of them, set up the right audio files. And if I hit play, you should hear what our water wheel sounds like. Uh, oh, I've got to hook up the uh, input as well. Okay, so using my input play event, hitting play. This is our water wheel. It's pretty cool. I think uh, when we look at combining some elements that we have earlier as well, combining the elements of uh, turning our rotation and having our wheel change volume um, as we hit the start of the rotation, we're gonna have the wheel really feel feel cool. It's gonna be hard to tell that it loops because you have loops of different lengths rolling over the top of each other as we talked about in the last video. And then at the same time, you have a dynamic element that fires and fades uh, as these loops go around. Okay, great. Now, next up, we're going to connect up the attenuation. Now, attenuation is how sound changes over distance. And this is something that you could approach this in many different ways. And the way that I'm gonna show you now is just to implement the interface that has attenuation, which you can see gives me the distance from a sound source. And what this means is I can have different 
sound elements playing over the top of uh, depending on how far away they are. Now, because I am dealing with distance, I'm going to want to set up some max and min distance uh, float variables so that I can pass those in and so that we can reuse this sound source uh, on other elements. Now, the only thing I would have to do there is add an array. But when I pass this distance through and I print it out, you can see the distance changing just in the bottom left of the output lock. Now, this number is a little hard to use. Uh, we, get a, we, we don't get a sense of how far away should we be from this? What is the min and max distance? How is my attenuation set up? So what we're going to do is normalize that distance. Normalizing this distance is taking whatever range, again, and using our map range uh, node here in, in Metasounds to map the min and max distance that we will pass in from outside so that we can have different variables uh, for different objects. So some objects are louder and therefore uh, take up more space or, or, or can be heard further away, I should say. This means that we will map that range to a zero to one. And what I'm going to do is actually map it from one to zero as well. This gives me a crossfade between the close sounds, right? And the fast sounds. So this top one here mapping from zero to one, meaning that as you're far away, we're going to be turning the sound source up. And this bottom element here, meaning that as you are closer, we're going to invert that distance and we're going to have that uh, inverted at the moment, which means it's louder as it comes closer. So not only do we have each of these elements in our uh, Metasounds graph that are going to play all of the wave elements against each other, they're also going to change by distance. The best example here I can think of is something like a helicopter moving farther away. Um, you hear a bit of that mid-distance roll off and that kind of thing as well. So you can see this normalized distance now that I'm printing out just changes things from zero to one and one to zero, meaning that everything past the normalized distance is one, everything below it is zero. This means we can remove uh, this multiplication here because we already have this multiplication occurring um, in our first channel with the uh, environment there. And we can pass in the gain value of some of the normalized distances to change what the gain is like for each of our sound sources. So each of our sound sources, we're just going to choose arbitrarily which ones are far and close. Inside the blueprint graph here is pretty simple. We just need to set float parameter of min and max distance and set them up as public variables on the source uh, on the blueprint itself, which means we can change it in the inspector or in the, in the uh, details panel. And we've passed in our rotation as we did before. Now, the only other change I made to this was to add an audio source and set up the Metasound on the audio source rather than have a Metasounds variable, just so we could have an audio component that we'd be able to move around um, so that it matches with the right part of our wheel. So you can see here, the, the audio source at the moment is actually not in, on the center of the wheel, but kind of just slightly on the right. You could hook up many different audio sources here. We could have the groaning coming from part of the wheel. Um, you can see in the level itself, we actually have different uh, different components. So the groaning and the wood might come from the wheel, but then the metal might come from the spokes on the side. But we won't set that up right now just to keep it a little bit simple. But each of these sound sources should theoretically actually be coming from some different places to give you uh, a shifting of the ITD into oral time difference of, of being between each of these sources. So all in all, it works like this. Uh, as we get closer, we will hear part of the sound source. As we get moved further away, we'll hear part of the sound source and we will hear different sound sources based on the rotation in degrees of the wheel. Now at the moment I have it set up so that as you move away you hear groans from a distance based on the start of the wheel, but you can get creative with this and I'd be really keen to see how people implement this themselves um, and some of the sound design decisions that you choose. So thanks so much for sticking around for another episode of whatever it is that this is uh, and thanks so much for the support I've been getting on social media and some of the new followers. Hello new followers. Uh, I notice you're not new subscribers yet so I think you're supposed to do something. Uh, I won't say it because I don't think I've said it yet. So um, thank you so much for sticking around. And I we're going to be moving on to some character movements some footsteps and foley. And uh, I'm really excited. Uh, thank you again. And I'll see you next time.